All right, welcome back to the LSJ channel. Hey, today I got a piece of really nice looking clean uh, red oak uh, chucked up here. Uh, hardwood, pretty fibrous. Uh, I love this stuff once it's churned and uh, and got a nice finish on it. Uh, I make show you spinning wheels. Uh, so how my lathe tool uh, can work in action with this and uh, how I can duplicate with it. So first thing I got to do here is mount this little honey up. Pretty simple step. And we just want to mount this up here. That looks pretty good. Give a couple cranks to jack her in tight. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. These uh these points just mount to, to your lathe bed and they just slide along. Uh, once you set this one, typically you never have to hardly mess with that. Uh, you know, I mean, you want to be careful because there's an exposed point there you could cover, but um, I just leave that on there because I use this so much. And then, but you will want to move this one uh, as your lengths change for your different spindle turning. So, no big deal. First thing I want to do here is knock the square off of this. Uh, nice piece of oak we got and for that I'm just going to use a regular couch here we go doesn't take too long bad check it out oh yeah that's close enough hoping to get any chips in anybody's eyes there all right let's take a look at that yeah I'm liking it another like I said uh, before it's nice I can keep my steady rest right in here now honestly if you want a really big turning you might want to move the steady rest out of the way uh, put it on the other side of your uh, your tailstock there, but uh, for most of my turnings, they normally don't go much over two, two and a half inches, uh, and that's fine for this here. I just leave it here. That way I can go back and forth. I don't have a great big setup or breakdown uh, when I want to duplicate a spindle or whatever, or use my lathe tool just to create spindles, which I do quite a bit because I love this thing. So let's see how we do here. My bad. I was going to tell you, first thing I got to do is I match this uh, tracer, this follower, up with my carbide bit. And I've got it spaced so that there's just a little bit of a difference there. So I got a little room to play with. So um, my original is going to end up just a hair bigger than the master. But uh, usually to the eye, you don't really notice that too much. That way I can sand it and finish it and ends up pretty close. Check it out. about what kind of wood you're messing with here because uh, this thing's pretty hungry and you want to make sure you're not uh, taking out a larger chunk than your wood can handle. You don't want to splinter your wood in other words. I got quite a bit to remove here. Sorry about that. Let's go back for another little go around here. I'm going to follow that a little closer. This thing's crazy. I love it. Of course, red oak it is fibrous. And yeah, I'm going to have to sand a little bit more. 
and I do my cherry or mahogany but or a walnut but it doesn't take too much especially if you have your blade can reverse you can go ahead and uh, knock the fibers off both directions I'm gonna go ahead and move my steady uh, steady or my uh, holder over here just to kind of get it out of the way so I don't have to be interrupted again too much we're going to continue our cut I like to try to keep my hand up high that uh, really cuts down on chatter and I'm in control Physics wise, it's a lot better to have your support right behind your cutter than it is to have it down real low. Trying to worry about my follower down there, my tracer. A little puff will keep that clean down there, no biggie. More. I don't want to overwork my wood. This thing, uh, this thing does a good job. It's gonna have too much clean up here. And I gotta get a little shallower. To get to the end of your wood, of course, you're gonna have to worry about chip out a little bit. So I kind of try to be a little more genteel with that. There we go. Pretty good. I keep my lathe bed wax. This thing's sitting right on the lathe bed, so you don't have to worry too much about it. The, uh, my lathe tool has a pretty flat surface underneath. I keep it waxed, and that makes everything slide around. You don't want it ball bearing smooth because you're going to lose your cut control, and at the same time, you don't want it sticking. So I found this to be just about right. Put a little wax on it, maybe a little silicone if you can keep that away from your uh, from your wood. Keeps everything kind of slippery. Uh, there's absolutely nowhere I'm doing to the bed or my lathe tool, so I like that. But I'm already seeing a pretty nice finish coming through with this uh, with this oak. I love this red oak anyway. It makes a great excuse me, great spinning wheel. And I think we're just about good with that. Uh, yeah. I hate to say it, it's not as uh, not as hairy as I thought. I'm glad for that. Uh, give you a little better picture. Let me come around the camera and make sure you're getting this. Ah, there we go. And yeah, that's uh, no sanding. And I don't know, I've seen a lot of duplicators in action and uh, I don't always get to see it right away before they get done sanding and I like to I just wanted to show you that that uh, my lathe tool does a pretty good finish initially yeah you gotta sand it but uh, this carbide bit here is uh, well it's a scraping it's it's it cuts it but you're actually doing a scraping just like you do with the carbide tipped uh, regular uh, handheld chisels uh, what I like about this by the way is uh, let me show you one more thing here with this my lathe tool uh, it's setting on a it's setting on a collar that uh, once I set this I don't have to worry about this cutting on center anymore because when I put it on here I already know it's going to be right on center now my my master down there is in the way but this this tip is lining up really well with my points and so I don't have to worry about up and down it changing its cut style. I've, I'm always in control. I can get really good chips that way. Well, I don't know. That's more like a ribbon or whatever, but since I'm scraping it, but uh, that kind of frees you up to think about, well, what am I creating here? What am I doing? Well, how do I want this to look next? Instead of, am I holding this chisel right? Uh, am I going to get a catch? So I've never had a catch with this, although uh, I've come pretty close. Try to take off too much wood at a time. Uh, of course, when you're doing pine, uh, that's a whole different ball game. Uh, I tend to, you'll have a little bit more tear out because uh, pine's so soft, but uh, 
that's why I wanted to show you this oak. This stuff is awesome. It's going to clean up nice. And uh, that's probably about it, my lathe tool. I'm going to have more videos.